Hey Nina, and um, whoever might also be watching this, uh, this is a refresher course designed to help you practice some of the stuff that I showed you on a guitar. Um, in this lesson, I'm mostly focusing on, or entirely focusing on, the open tuning that I showed you. Um, so on an ordinary guitar, if I were to play uh, a regular open strings, then the strings, because they are different from one another, they'll clash and you don't get a pretty sound, but the benefit, the primary benefit of open tuning is when I play like this, um, open, it makes a very nice sound. So the strings are down tuned and up tuned each. Um, I'll throw up a diagram on the screen, voila, uh, and I'll go through the strings, how you get to each of them. So first of all, uh, this is C, open tuning. So you down tune your sixth string, the string that's closest to your face, from an E to a C. That's two whole steps, so it should end up sounding like this. Then for the fifth string, you down tune the A to a G, which is one whole step, it should sound like this. For the fourth string, you should down tune the D to a C. The third string, you keep exactly where it was, at a G. And for the second string, you up tune that one half step from a B to a C. Remember, there's no B sharp. Um, be careful as you are tuning that one up. Uh, when you're up tuning, particularly thin strings, it uh, it can snap, so just be careful. Keep on tapping it to make sure that uh, it's not too tight and it won't get you. Um, and then the top string, you keep exactly where it was, which is an E. So, getting into open tuning now. Uh, some of the benefits of open tuning are, as you'll notice, many of the strings are the exact same thing. So the sixth string, the fourth string, and the second string are all C. The fifth string and the third string are both G. So what that lets us do is only memorize a couple patterns, the C string and, excuse me, the C string and the G string, and then suddenly, if you memorize these two strings, you also get all of these half off. So, let's build up a little bit of the skill there, and then put it to work. Okay, so, as I said, these strings mirror each other. So, we're able to play similar notes between each of them and create a simple melody that'll get stuck inside people's head very easily. I like to build from the middle out to explore the fretboard, um, and that will give you the opportunity to play a lot of cool, interesting melodies. Uh, we're going to be starting on the fifth fret. The fifth fret in open tuning is always your best friend, at least in C, because sounds quite nice. Uh, so understand that when you are going down each string, you always can come back to open string and play that as well. So experiment and speed up your fingers with a little bit of practice by uh, starting far away from you and picking uh, the second string down to the sixth string with a couple pull-offs. So you put your second finger on the fifth fret, you lift it off, boom, and repeat. Cool. And of course you can go back up as well. That's not enough, so after your fifth fret you can start expanding from the middle out. We're going to be going to the 4th fret and adding that in. The 4th fret is also applicable uh, for each string, the G's and the C's. 
So when we put it together, you'll get a nice sounding riff. And what's especially cool is these form tiny little chords together uh, in many different combinations. So if you want to put your first finger on a C string on the fourth fret and your uh, second finger on the fifth fret of a G string, it'll come out something like this or something like this. And as usual, um, you're able to mess around with those different chords by experimenting and for example, putting on some hammer-ons. So if I start with my first and second finger in that chord shape, I'm able to put down my third finger just underneath it, and that'll create a nice progression just in itself. You can also get a little bit more discordant by putting your first finger on the fourth fret of the C string uh, while keeping your second finger planted. If I remember correctly, uh, you didn't like the sound of that one as much, that it was a little bit discordant, but it ends up creating some really neat chords. Um, especially when you use it in conjunction with uh, the standard right there on the fifth fret. So. As usual, whenever you want to end a chord progression, you can always just come back to open. So, um, we just went over using the 4th fret and the 5th fret, and you can, of course, uh, add on to that and expand outwards. Uh, to start, again, focus on the 5th and the 4th and open to create a lot of your melodies. That'll, um, <laughs> that'll be nice together. and. Uh, you can also add in the seventh fret for these to give yourself a little uh, a little playing room where you don't need to move your wrist up and down the neck at all, but you get a lot of variance in what you're able to play. So, starting again on the second fret or second string, um, if we start with this fifth fret, we can go up and then go back down. slides, but those are quite fun. Okay, um, and at the end of this I'll chuck you a sheet that you can use that will explain all of the different uh, places that you're able to put your fingers, but just using 4th fret, the 5th fret, and the 7th fret for now will absolutely open up um, different melodies in different octaves so that you're able to create some cool sounding riffs. All right, now on for tip number two. All right, we're back for tip number two. We just ended with ex explaining how you're able to incorporate a lot using the seventh fret, the fifth fret, and the fourth fret to create a melody. Now let's introduce some bass lines and some chords that you can use in order to maybe back up a different guitarist or back up your own singing, if that's something that you want to do. Uh, so this chord right here, where you place your first finger, uh, your index finger on the sixth string closest to you, and that should be on the fifth fret, and your second finger immediately underneath it on the fifth string, you are able to a simple bass line, just uh, switching between that and open. But you're also able to slide around that same pattern on these strings that are closest to your face and create different chord sequences. So that's what that should sound like. Let's s slide it up and begin to explore the rest of the neck. So, going from the 5th fret up to the 7th fret, this is the 
five chord, so it's a nice turnaround uh, in your different chord sequences. So, for example... <laughs> And then, as you might recall, uh, we can slide that up one more time in that exact same shape and come up to the ninth fret. This is a more minor sounding chord, and we'll be able to expand on that a little bit later. Uh, but on the ninth fret, if you start with that and slide around, you are able to create a minor sounding, sad sounding, or... Um, kind of tribal sounding beats. It's quite cool. So uh, the chord progression that I gave to you to mess around with was sliding from the ninth fret to the seventh fret to the fifth fret to the seventh fret, sounding something like this. fingers staying in the same pattern for the whole way through. Um, intermixing and switching between these chords can give you enough of a sound to create any song that you want already, but let's throw some more on top of that. Uh, this discordant chord, where you place your fourth or your first finger on the fourth fret of the sixth string, and then your fifth string is uh, occupied by your second finger on the fifth fret. That can again create a nice turnaround chord so to add into the mix. So something like this where you take the original chord progression. Maybe the second time through you want to incorporate that chord. Finally, it's super simple, uh, simple sounding, and quite nice to play. If you take this same pattern and bring it up to the 12th fret, that's actually an octave of uh, open strings. So up on the 12th fret, you're able to incorporate that as well. Uh, depending on your guitar, it might be a little bit out of tune. Mine's a little bit out of tune, but it's a nice sound. That was tip number two, uh, and I'll show you a little bit on how to expand and play around with that in tip number three. All right, so I just taught you how in tip number one, you are able to basically play the melody line with the same exact uh, set of frets and always being able to come back to those. So 4th fret, 5th fret, 7th fret, to a certain extent, ninth fret. And then in the second tip, I showed you how you can create your own bass line. Now, what I was getting you to be able to do uh, by the time that I left was combine those two things, and I was astounded at how quickly you picked it up. Let's see if you can do it again. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is play that bass line, and then also play some sort of melody on top of it. This melody that you can create, you are picking from the different uh, frets that you're able to play on, and playing them essentially in random order. Um, so, how does it sound? Uh, let's say I'm starting on the 5th fret, or the chord 5, the 7th fret right here. I can signal a chord change by, on a lower string, um, away from me, on the third string I can play on the seventh fret as well with my pinky, and I can perhaps go up to the ninth fret, or if I wanted to, uh, I can take this same chord pattern, instead of playing with my index and my middle, I'm playing with my middle and my ring finger, 
and I squish in my pinky down to fit in the same spot. And I can come back to the fifth fret here. So something like that will lead me into playing down on the fifth fret with the rest of the fingers. And again, right there, I am squishing in my pinky to fit on the same group of frets and playing the melody that continues to descend. So if I'm just looking at the melody, it looks like this. behind it are going like this. So, together. lines and in the middle of that I was experimenting uh, placing first and foremost the different chords that I wanted using my second finger and third finger or my index and middle and then experimenting with where I want to place the additional notes on top of that. During that time you saw that I uh, did a couple hammer-ons. That's where you pluck the note beforehand and then slam the finger on poking it and then pull offs as well which is where you pluck the note and then as the technique says you pull off okay and that brings us to a final tip tip number four which will bring us to uh playing melody uh, on its own, getting away from these different chords. This is something that I think I introduced to you, but didn't have as much time to show you. So, tip number four. All right, so since each of these strings uh, has a nice octave very close to it, uh, all of these C strings are together and all of these two G strings are together. Whatever melody you are playing, something like this, you can emphasize by, um, similar to if you have a chorus of uh, sopranos and altos weaving their voices together on different octaves, it sounds more full. So we're able to do the same thing by mimicking and mirroring that same note. Again, using the 4th, 5th, and 7th frets, we're able to get a lot done. Um, and the cool thing about open tuning is you can strum like hell and it'll create a nice full sounding melody and the melody will uh, manage to appear over top of the chords uh, just because you have that extra note on an octave adding support. So something like this. together, uh, you're going to be well on your way to messing around in open tuning. Uh, admittedly, I didn't touch on this red-headed stepchild of a string, the E string, which didn't change. Uh, for that, you are going to be playing in C major, um, 
which is its own its own little talk. Um, some resources on that for you as well. But yeah, that brings us to roughly the end of this refresher course on open tuning. Um, I think what I had you practicing last was uh, what we worked with in tip three. So uh, transitioning between chords and getting that melody going. to use it, you're going to be able to experiment and create your own stuff. Um, yeah, this was fun for me, and if you have other questions or if you want me to follow up and show you some basics for a regular tuning so that you don't have to keep on switching your guitar back and forth, uh, I'd love to be able to do that. So, yeah. Um, yeah, this was fun. Alright, thanks Nina, and enjoy.